Sometimes an actor finds a role that just connects the role of a lifetime. James Gandolfini, who died suddenly today at 51, was Tony Soprano. For 86 episodes over six seasons on HBO, Gandolfini seared America's eyeballs with his all-out portrayal of a New Jersey mob boss plagued by self-doubt and petty problems, yet capable of staggering and ruthless violence. With news of his passing, apparently of a heart attack while he was in Italy, the world has not only lost an immensely talented actor, but also a cultural icon. So by the time the world met Tony Soprano in 1999, Gandolfini had become a seasoned master at bringing to life the gray areas between crime and civility, evil and humanity. But the mob roles beckoned. He played alongside Brad Pitt in last year's Killing Them Softly, telling ABC's Cynthia McFadden he had to be talked into playing yet another tough guy. I didn't want to do another, another mob guy for a long time, and... Why? Well, why? I've done it for 10 years. <laughs> In a statement tonight, HBO said, He was a special man, a great talent, but more importantly, a gentle and loving person. Now he is gone, leaving behind a wife and two children, including an eight-month-old girl. But like all iconic roles, Tony Soprano lives on, and so does the gifted man who brought him to life and died uh, two, two weeks ago. Did you have any sense that there was anything wrong? Well, I think it was more, a little more than two weeks. He was in Vegas at a dinner. We were at the same table. I had no sense at all. He seemed jovial and happy. In fact, uh, there was a big auction, and uh, one of the things they auctioned off was a, a big cruise of the Mediterranean, and the guy next to him bought the whole boat, uh, like for like two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the week. He bid on it, and he invited James Gandolfini to go with him. And James said, "Of course I'll go." <laughs> he was very, very exuberant, very lively, very friendly, and uh, according to a lot of people in the business that I've talked to, an underrated actor. You know, he stamped himself in The Soprano so much that people overlook. So he was in Italy, I guess it was a combination of vacation and work for the film festival, but they are saying heart attack. And he was, well, obviously he was overweight, but I never knew of any previous illness, and uh, I'm very sad to hear this. He was a really wonderful presence in America, and of course he stamped that role. Uh, I mean, he made that his, his role. He, he nurtured it, he perfected it, he was brilliant in The Sopranos. But his other work, too, as well, he did, he did some westerns. He was a very diverse character actor who became a star. And, Larry, you had a chance to interview with him, sit down with him, you know, get a sense of who the person was. What was he like, you know, when you sat down and had that eye-to-eye -eye contact, that face-to-face? -face, what was he like as a person? He was uh, extremely friendly and not... A, a, a kind of reduced ego, if I could put it that way. He, he had no following, he had no handlers following with him. He was, uh, he was a, if you, there's only way to put it, he was a regular guy. He was like one of the guys. He would be like, a, it's, you know, I'm a Brooklyn guy. He would be like the guy you'd want to hang out on a corner with him. You know, he was like, hey, let's go have a pizza. He was, he was, he was just a really down to earth regular guy.